Hi, welcome back to the deal board, everybody. And as part of our new year's um, episode that we do every year, our annual episode, we are interviewing some of our top performers across the trans world network who have achieved extraordinary goals they set for themselves in 2021. In today's economy, more people than ever are looking to buy and sell businesses, but how do you do it? Welcome to the deal board presented by trans world business advisors, straight talk about real deals and real people. Listen to stories, interviews, and expert advice to help your business sale, merger, or acquisition process. Now, here are your business exit experts, Andy and Jessica. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to a very special episode of The Deal Board. Not only because we have very special guests this week, uh, but we have our co-host back, Jessica. Welcome back, and congratulations on expanding your family. Yeah, thanks. It's great to be back. It was nice to take some time off. I'm glad my son timed his delivery right around the holidays. So we got to take some good time. Um, but yeah, it's great to be back and see everybody. And I'm excited to be back for our favorite show that we do every single year. Uh, we're excited to have a returning guest, JT Tatum. And JT has been with us. This is what, the third year you've kicked off New Year's with us, JT? That is correct. Yes, it is three. Th third time's a charm. Yeah, right. So today we're going to talk about goals again. Um, JT is a goal getter. He has a lot of great tips and tricks and strategies and inspiration around this. And we're also going to hear from brokers and partners around our trans world network of some amazing goals that they've accomplished over the last year. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah, it's gonna, it, it will be a great show. We have some great guests uh, following this interview, but being with JT, thank you so much for coming back. And we really appreciate all you do. And JT, why don't you kick it off and give us a little idea of, you know, how do we get started again? I mean, it's been an incredibly challenging, say, 24 mm -hmm. months for people out there in the world. Tons of excuses why you should put aside your goals or have excuses for not making them. So how do you kind of like regroup and kind of jump into it? No, it's great. Well, again, thanks, Andy and Jess, both of you for uh, kicking off 2022 the way you always do with lots of vigor and energy. And I echo what Andy said. It's great to have Jessica back. No offense, Andy. We love you and you do a great <laughs> job. But, you know, there's, great. It's, it's, the, it's the Batman and Robin thing, the Lone Ranger and Tonto. You guys go together like salt and pepper. We got to have it. So, um, yeah, you know, it's, 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 a, it's an interesting question, Andy, because 24 months, you, I think you're right. Most people would arguably say probably some of the most challenging months for most people in recent history and, and for some in their entire lifetime. And it would be easy to use that as an excuse to kick it off to the side and go, well, you know, everything's unpredictable. I don't know what's going to happen. And so what's the point? Well, that's exactly the point. Okay. And, uh, as I like to say to our team here and and our franchisees that we've worked with for years and years is control the controllable. You don't control a lot of things. If there's anything I've learned in the pandemic, it's just reinforced for me how not in control I really am because something like that comes along and no matter how much you've prepared or what you've done, you know, you're throwing a, a, a major curveball that way. So the only thing that helps me in that time and maybe helps a lot of people is to, to control what you can control. There are things that you can exercise effort, energy, and resources over um, and, and control the best you can, knowing that there are going to be some things that are going to happen that are out of your control. And that's a whole nother show. You know, how do I deal with those things when they come that were maybe a little bit unexpected? But, uh, you know, the years past, we've talked a lot about the, the eight W's of goal getting. And uh, I thought today we could just kind of go backwards a little bit and, and, and focus on, you know, the whys of the goal getting um, and, and starting with kind of the be, do and have piece. Now, it reminds me in 1994, my general manager, when I was working at the uh, the franchise cor corporation at Sinorama, JJ Prendamano, big Zig Ziglar guy, loved Zig, had dinner with Zig and the redhead. And he said, I'm gonna send you away to a class and I want you to go learn from Zig and, and their team. So I went to Dallas and I spent a week there, actually met Zig in the parking lot. That's a whole nother story. I'll get into some other time. Um, anyway, and the, the, the purpose of that was at Ziegler Education Systems, they had a session and a, and, a, and a class on teaching folks how to set goals. So sometimes people ask me, how'd you get into this goal thing so much? And that, I, I give all the credit to JJ and Zig 
for indoctrinating me into it in 1994. Um, and one of the big pieces of that process that Zig and his team taught were the be, do, and have principles. And I remember thinking, going through that class, why isn't this being taught somewhere other places? Like, how did I get to be 30 years old and nobody's ever told me this stuff, you know? And so it really stuck with me. And uh, what, what Zig encouraged you to do was to start off when you're going to be doing goal setting, as he liked it, uh, call it, is you start off by making a list of everything you've ever wanted to be, do, or have. Now, you guys probably have a list like that, Randy and Jess, and you know, maybe it's from years ago, or maybe you made a new one for 2022. You guys have new lists of things you want to accomplish this year? I mean, I do. As I took on a new role of mother, um, it just <laughs> added a whole nother list of stuff, right? Exactly. Yes. Okay. And now those things that you're going to be, do, or have on that list, Jess, they have impact on more than just you. You know, your, 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 your viewpoint, your, your perspective has changed and broadened now because there's someone else's life who's dependent on some of those decisions you're going to make. Uh, and that really helps us get to the, the first part of the be, do, and the have. Uh, you know, a lot of people will make that list and they'll say, well, I, I want to be famous. I want to be rich. I want to be comfortable. I want to be satisfied. I want to be surrounded with my family. I want to be influential. And those are all not to say one's good or one's bad. Everybody's list is their list of the things that are important. Um, what we're talking about a little bit more deeply today is, is the next level of be, okay? And, you know, what do I have to be? What do I have to become before I can do and have those other things on the list? Uh, whether it's, you know, uh, accomplishment financially, physically, relationally, in career, uh, mental awareness, uh, physical health, et cetera, et cetera. There are certain things that you're going to first have to be um, core value wise. That's really, really where we're go where we're going today uh, before you can do or have those things. So, you know, I know we've referenced this before, Andy. Remember, we've talked about Simon Sinek's book, uh, which is Start With Why. You guys have heard this book before, right? Yes. And, and, and the, the whole gist of what Simon's talking about there is, what are the motives? What are the purposes? What's behind the what you're going to do and the how you're going to do it? You start first with why are you going to do it? And so in goal getting, you kind of start with the same principles. Like, what do I have to become? What kind of person do I need to be? What are the things that are going to be most important to me on the inside that are going to then enable me to go out and accomplish these other do and have goals that I may be setting for myself? So just think about the B as it, it's your motive. It's your purpose. Okay. What's behind why you, what's driving you to do what you do. So the B uh, kind of equals your core values. And I don't know, have you guys ever gone through like a core values exercise determining what your personal core values are? Andy shaking his head. Yes. Jess, how about you? Yeah, I've done yes. personal. And then obviously we've taken our teams through it too for corporate core values as well. Okay. So you guys have done it, not just on the individual level, but you've done it also for your organization. Mm -hmm. And and what kind of impact has that had on the people on the team? I, I think mainly it gives it's, it gives a name to like the culture, right? There's mm. certain things that happen within our team, whether we define them or not. But as we define those core values, we we really it's been easier to make decisions on who gets to join the team, who gets to stay on the team, how we promote, you know, what kind of stories we tell of success, all of those things. It also helps That's with that. expectations too, right? So. Right. You know, we we actually hang our core values on our wall. Uh, it's a and we, you know, we live by them, and it just reminds mm. everybody who walks through the building is like, this is what we stand for. Exactly, and great way to put it. It's what we it's it, it measures. Okay, it's kind of a measuring stick. Like, okay, if we're going to take this action over here, does that align with what we've said is going to be true about us as individuals or as a team in our organization? So. Uh, and the, if the B equals your core values, then those core values have to drive alignment with the things that you're going to do or you're going to have. It's kind of like the, the core values are what going to guide your behavior. They're going to guide my behavior. OK, um, they're going to be kind of my personal code of conduct. Like these are the bumpers. Uh, I just went bowling with my with my uh, my wife and my son and his daughter and, and sorry, my, my daughter in law. And they're two small kids. OK, and their two small kids are. Uh, Enoch is basically two and Ellie is just a little bit older than that. So, you know, when they bowled, we had to put the rails in, 
Okay. Cause if you don't, it's going to be gutter the whole time. Right. So that's what core values are. They're the bumpers. They're the rails that keep us heading in the direction that we want to head into. They kind of set ourselves the, the boundaries of, well, I'm not really going to go there because that goes against what I've said is true about me. So, um, it's it's why I love the eulogy exercise. Now, you know, I've, I've developed a program called Goal Getter, which I've used with my own team and I've used with many, many clients in helping them define their personal goals and also their business goals. And one of the first things I do is I ask people to write their own eulogy. So in other words, if you were at your funeral and somebody and all your family and, and your close friends were standing up there, what do you want them to be able to say about you at your funeral? It's, it's, some people go, that's kind of a morbid thought, but it is a very eye-opening um, exercise for you to go through because you're not writing what, you, what they're going to say. You're writing what you hope they can say. And they're going to say that if you have conducted yourself a certain way. So when you write that eulogy, then you start looking at the things that you do day in and day out. And you go, well, if I did this, would they be able to say that about me at the funeral? Or if I do that, they're definitely going to be able to say that. And it's great for your kids. I write, here's what I want my sons to say. I want my wife to say. I want Andy to say, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So I got a slight extra couple bucks Andy's way. So he speaks good to me there, but <laughs> hey, whatever it takes. You know? <laughs> but it's, it's the eulogy exercise is really getting to the core of the core values piece. So here's a question, you know, can you state or boil down the top maybe five to 10 values that are most important to you? And as the listener today, ask yourself that question, you know, if I had to write down, if somebody said to me, what are the five or 10 most important things, core values now about you or to you in leadership and the way you conduct yourself, et cetera, could you state that? And they're core because they're central to your being. They like they 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 drive your existence. They're foundational to you, and they don't tend to shift like sands with the tides. You can plant deep pilings in solid core values. They're not you know influenced by oh what's the trend today or what's popular opinion. Core values are rock solid. When you decide on these, you're saying this is what I stand for. And Andy said that a second ago. Uh, another way to ask that is, what won't you stand for? <laughs> That's kind of the opposite way of that uh, of looking at it. So, you know, you you may start with making a or creating a, a a B list. So, how do I create my quote B list? You know, make a list. Start with words, and uh, you can find all kinds of stuff on the internet of list of core values, et cetera. I don't encourage you to pull the list up because then your conscious mind tends to get in the way of looking at that list of words and going, well, that sounds like a really good one. And that sounds like a really good one. And you might be picking ones that sound good, but they're really not resonating with who you are as an individual. Okay. Um, you know, they could be words like disciplined or diligent or trustworthy or honest or caring or ethical or punctual, sacrificial, healthy. Those are some of mine on my list. Okay. Um, and, and, and then once you have a list and you may wind up with a list of 30 or 40 words, then you kind of group those words that are similar together. If, you know, if you've got trustworthy, honest, transparent, uh, et cetera, candid, those are kind of all saying the same things. So you might wind, them, wind up with a group of them. Ultimately, your target is to wind up with, you know, like I said, five to 10 that you say, these are, the, these are my guys. These are my guys. These are, these are what I'm going to stand on. These are the things I'm going to stand for. And once you have that list, then you can take it and you can flush it out a little bit further. You know, you may, may, may build some sentences around that. So if I have health is one of mine, um, instead of just saying, well, you know, healthy is one of my core values, I put a sentence to that that says, I'm dedicated to eat, sleep, and move, building my health, mind, and body. So that is a way for me to kind of, I don't want to say dress that up, but just expand on it more because my mind tends to get rid of the things that are mundane or commonplace. So if I put some words in there and 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 articulate that a little bit differently. I tend to stand on that a little bit better. So at 4:30 or 4:45 when I get up in the morning and I'm thinking I really want to lay here for another hour, no, I'm dedicated to eat, sleep and move, building my healthy mind and body. That's I keep saying that to myself over and over and that's what drives me then to take the action that I've said that I that I need to take. Um you know, I I I have a core values of love and caring because I'm not good at it. And that's that I'm not sure if I'm saying that the right way. That's one I have to work on. Okay. And I 
I, I flesh that out by saying I'm present in my interactions with others showing love and care because I have a tendency to put my head down, put my blinders on and just do my thing. And, you know, I could have family and friends around me and I'm not really engaged with them as well as I, I have to intentionally do that to show them that I love them and I care about them. And I'm not just so self-absorbed thinking about what's the next thing on my list to do. That's a personal challenge for me. And so building that kind of a core value and defining it is something that I'm I'm working on as we speak, uh, because I need I know I need to be do better than that, or do better at that. And I know that because I need to do better at that, because all the time, effort, and energy I put into working and doing deals and helping people is important. But if I do all that and build a great big company and then come home at the end of it and nobody's there, what did I do it for? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So JT, I have a question. I mean, so it seems like these B statements, like you could just stop your goals there, right? This is just a (laughs) guiding light of like, this is who I want to be, not just in the coming year, but long term. Can you stop it there? Or or like, is, do you have to do the other two parts? Well, I, 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 the answer to your question is, can you? Sure you can, Jess. You're, you're, you're you're the master of your own ship. You do what you want. But here's my point. If you start with the B piece first, then when you create the goals, you have something to test them against. Let me give you a for instance, okay? So they have to be able to be um, in alignment, as we said a little bit earlier, right? So in other words, I can't have a goal or a core value of I'm going to be honest and trustworthy and then have a do goal of being a bank robber or embezzler. They don't, they don't align with each other. No, okay? no, no, not typically. <laughs> okay, so, okay, can I be loving and have close relationships with my family? Yes, those align, okay? So having the Bs really help you when you make your list of the do's and haves to kind of have a litmus test to say, okay, well, this is what I want to do or have. Is that congruent with what I've said I'm going to be? And if the answer is no, then take it off the list and don't pursue it. This is the the foundational piece. Like I said, pilings, drive them deep. You can do that here, and then you can build your aspirations of what you want to do and what you want to have on top of that, you got a firm foundation to be, to, to, to build on. Yeah. And these bees can last for a long time. I mean, they these, should. Yeah. They, Absolutely. This, is, this is not an annual exercise. So what I'm saying <laughs> is, you know, people get, I think people get frustrated, like how hard this may be, this whole process of setting goals and, and, you know, it, it is hard, but it can make the whole year run a lot easier. If you get, if you, sit down, do these bees, set your goals, and then put them on a board. Uh, and if you're listening on a podcast episode, you uh, you know, on an application, you might not see uh, JT's whiteboard behind them, but he's got a whiteboard behind them and he's got lots of whiteboards. I know he keeps his goals very visual to himself. Yes. And so if you keep your goals visual to yourself, it'll be a lot more, it'll be a lot easier to reach those goals. That's right. That's right. And so they, the, the, the core value piece is what you build everything else on because year after year, you're going to have new goals and new aspirations. I was talking to a young guy a little bit earlier before we jumped on this call. And uh, he's a, he's a guy that we're mentoring. And I said, you know, so what do your goals look like this year? Well, I want to go to four places I haven't been before. Okay. Well, next year he might want to go to five places he hasn't been before or the five places he goes to next year will certainly probably be different than the four places he went to this year. So the goal and the, 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 the final result can change, but the core of who you are should not. It should right. not change like the wind. It should not change because of popular opinion. And that's why it needs to be what's true to you. And you got to be true to yourself, you know, and everybody's core value list is probably going to be different when you go through the exercise. Yeah, I think it's very important. And I, I love the foundational piece too. And I like, I like the guardrails analogy because we, we do interview some people on here that have had very big financially successful years, but sometimes you have to be true to yourself and figure out what is enough financial success when I can balance it with the other things I want to be in my life. You know, I want yeah, to be sure. dedicated to my family and things like that and keeping that in alignment. That's yeah, good. Sure. And that's, that's a perfect way to look at it. Go ahead, Andy. Sorry. No, I was just saying, you know, one of the people that you're going to be hearing from today has 
has different goals than he had from last year. He had an incredible financial year, uh, but, and I won't give it away. So he could talk a little bit about more, but he has different <laughs> goals because he's at a different place in his life. And he had his first grandchild and, you know, he has different priorities now and he, right. he wants to build a team around him. So he, he can operate in a different fashion than he has been over the last few years. That's good. Our circumstances may change, but our core values should not. Mm -hmm. Right. It's amazing. So let's, yeah. So let's talk about the next two pieces then, JT. Like, is there uh, a structure for this do have, or is it as simple as just making a list of things you want to do and things you want to have? Yeah. So that's good. Well, if I go back to, to, to Zig's teaching, he said in the beginning, you make a list of everything you ever wanted to be, do, or have. And then the next thing you do is let's take that do and have list. Write one sentence for each one as to why. If you cannot articulate in one sentence why you want to do or have that thing, okay, that a certain accomplishment, a certain relationship, a certain financial reward, whatever it is, then you probably shouldn't pursue it. That's the next step in the process, okay? Write it out. This is, goes back to the eight W's of goal getting, right? Write it is number one. Number two is why. Why do I want to do that? And that exercise there, when you have the list, and that's where you start, right? The core value list is over here, the Bs, and then the do's or haves are over here. These are all the things I'd like to accomplish this year, within three years, within 10 years, over the course of my lifetime. Uh, one of the next uh, episodes or next time we get together, we can talk about the 100-year goals, okay? And uh, because that's another great exercise, you know, you guys are probably a little bit younger than I am. I don't know, Andy and I are pretty close, but Jess yes. is probably a little bit younger, right? And you say, all right, so let's say that we're 40 or 50 years old, but your goal is to live to be 100. What would you, what have you already done in the first 40 or 50 years? And you make a list of all the wins because you got to remind yourself that you're a winner. You can get things done. And then you make a list saying, if I was going to live to be 100, what things would I want to get done between now and then? Those are really long-term goals, okay? Uh, the do or have list may also have your short-term goals. Short-term goals are typically what things that you want to get done in the next 12 months. And I would certainly uh, say to all of the listeners, hey, at least start there, like between now and this time next year. So here's how I do it at home. I just did it over the course of the Christmas and New Year's break, which I do every year, is I write in my journal, I write it this way. It's December 31st, 2022. And then I write out what has happened. So I'm, it's kind of like I'm projecting myself forward. And now I'm looking back at what was accomplished. Rather than saying, here's what I'm going to do, I write it as though it's already been done. And it helps me clarify. It's kind of like the eulogy exercise that we talked about a little bit earlier. Helps me clarify, begin with the end in mind. What do I want it to look like when I finish? And then I create my plan going backwards to say, well, if these are going to be the things that are true, these are the steps I'm going to have to have taken and by when I'm going to have, have taken them. And that would take you back to the eight W's of goal getting, which you've got right, you've got why, you've got where, where the obstacles are going to be. You know, what's the, uh, who am I going to need help from? What's my plan going to look like? When do I want to have it done by? So if you haven't listened to that episode, which is either the first or second of these, I don't remember which one, stick it in the show notes and maybe they can go back and hear it again. Yeah, I think it, I think it was last year, but we'll drop it in the show notes, but it was an early January, 2021 episode. And that was a great one to tie into from like a more tactical perspective. Yes, right? yes, yes. But it all, always all starts with a list. You got to, you know, dream. And and as Zig used to say, he would say, whatever you're going to put on the be, do, and have list, don't qualify it while you're writing it. Just make the list. You'll qualify it later. And then you'll look for alignment. Can I, can I, can I state in one sentence why I should get this done? Does it align with what my core values say about me? But you have the freedom to dream when you do your be, do, and have. So dream big. That's what my dad used to say. You're going to dream anyway. You might as well dream big. I love that because I do think some people do have a uh, struggle dreaming big or qualifying. I'm one of those people. I bring, I, re, I let reality bring my goals and right. my dreams. Down. Now my husband, on the other hand, which you both know, you know, he <laughs> he's in a whole different land than I am in terms of what he thinks can accomplish, which it, for this exercise is perfect. Right. It's, it's, it is perfect. Yes. Yeah. You just give un, yourself the freedom to do it. Yeah. Yes. Give yourself the freedom. That's right. Exactly. It's a, it's always great to just, you know, just sit there and just write and just, you know, I, I, I like being creative. It's part of like one of my goals is always to try to be creative at the same time. And it's, it's truly freeing to just like let that out. Uh, let and, it go. And 
let it go. And, and holidays are a great time. And if you haven't done it yet, because you're listening to this and it's probably just about February or uh, just beginning of February, uh, it's not too late. No, never. You know, it's, it's a good it's a good point, Andy, because a lot of times we wait for, well, I'm going to do that in the new year. I'm going to do that in the new year. That's a self-imposed restriction. I mean, we do it because it's a fresh start. I get it. But you can start anew anytime, any day. OK, um, and here, I'll give a quick plug. One of the uh, one of the resources I use is uh, it's called the Best Self Journal. And if you go to bestself.co, I believe it is, uh, you can find all kinds of useful resources that are there. Um, and that's it's a goal planner, basically. And it's a week by week. And it goes for basically the first six months of the year. And then I do another one for the second six months of the year. And so you can really you have time there uh, and, and the structure they put together. It's a it's a rough structure. So it's not, you know, hard and fast. You got to do it this way. But it's a great place to start capturing some of those ideas and start making those lists and give yourself the, the freedom to dream. It's OK. It's perfectly uh, uh, allowed. It's funny, you know. Uh, I saw something in Atlanta airport when I was traveling through over the holidays and it was in the Delta crown room or the sky club. Now they call it. And it basically said, you know, uh, that the people who know how to paint kids always know how to paint. It's a shame that when they become grownups, they realize they don't know how. I mean, you think about it. Every kid, every painting is a masterpiece. Okay. But then somewhere along the line, you realize, Hey, I'm really not that good. And so you stop. Why be creative, put it all out there on the paper. Do a little finger painting as you do your goal getting. You might, you might, you might do a little self-expression. Jessica is going to be doing that with bricks at some point. Okay, exactly. you're going to have masterpieces all over that refrigerator. No, oh, yeah. yeah, we'll start. We'll start trading in bricks, Fish art. <laughs> That's right. That's right. What are those NFTs? I can see NFTs. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it's his first investment. Well, JT, I think this has been a great place for all of our listeners to start. I think it's tied really well into the last uh, two years, a third year in a row. I got a lot out of today. Um, but before we wrap up, why don't you tell the listeners how to get in touch with you if they have questions about this? Obviously, too, you you own Transworld Business Advisors in upstate South Carolina and western North Carolina. So give a little plug for the offices, too. Sure, sure. Well, I'm always available uh, on my mobile, 864-315-8998. Or you can always reach me at JT1. That's JT and the numeral one at tworld.com. You are very special to us. And, uh, and, Thanks, and you do such great things for for the whole system. And, and you, I know you still keep in touch with everybody back in Sinorama and UFG and you help them as well. So thank you for all you do. I really appreciate it. Got to keep giving baby. Got to keep giving. Thanks thank for having you. me. Transworld Business Advisors is the world's largest business brokerage and mergers and acquisitions firm with over 500 brokers in nearly 200 offices worldwide. Transworld's team handles thousands of business sales every year. To be connected with a qualified business broker or learn more about the buying and selling process, visit tworld.com forward slash the deal board or call 888-719-9098. Everybody, welcome back. And I have a very special guest, a returning guest, Peter Berg, my partner from Transworld Business Advisors, of course, and Transworld M&A Advisors, uh, heads up our M&A department as well. And we are talking about goals this year, and we're talking about last year's goals. And we have been interviewing a couple of people that uh, had big, hairy, audacious goals. Uh, but as long as I've known you, Peter, you've been a goal setter. And uh, why don't you talk about that a little bit? Sure, Andy. Thanks for having me on. You know, um, I, uh, when I when I came into the business and, and I was a business owner before, I had my salespeople always do targeted uh, budgeting for their own goals. And I needed that so that I, I could set my own financial targets. And when I can I, I developed a spreadsheet and I I know that it's been it's been used in training and and it's in the system, but not everybody uh, always uses it. But if you do use it, it kind of lays out a model for if you say how much money you want to make, it works backwards and says, all right, well, if I want to make this much money, I've got to close this many deals at, at the various sizes, under 100, 100, 250 to five, a million and above. And 
if I'm going to do that, I need to have inventory, right? I have to have listings. And therefore, how many sales calls, how many postcards, how many uh, drop letters, how many meetings, how many charity events, uh, how many BNI groups do I need to go to to generate leads, which is going to result in listings, which is going to result in potential sales, knowing that maybe I'm going to sell 30 to 40 percent of, of the business of my businesses. So it's really a numbers game. And you, you start with your goal and you work backwards. And if you work the plan, you should hit your goal or be close to it. Um, and if you if your goal is 25 percent greater than you than, than you really want. And you, then you really can hit your goal. So that's kind of how, what I've been doing over the years. And it just helps me keep focused on my marketing efforts, looking at my inventory, making sure that I have something to sell. And when my inventory, is, when I start having a lot of closings, my inventory is light, lightens up. I know I have to refocus more time on marketing and building up uh, new engagements. Um, once I've got my inventory full, then I can focus more on marketing and selling the inventory. So it's it's a, it's a juggling process that we're always in. Yeah, I, I, and I, I remember we used to actually look at it in June, like halfway through the year, and kind of readjust it as well. Right, for sure, because you know if you have a big goal and you're not hitting it, um, you got to look at what is it I'm not doing. Um, to hit the goal. I mean, typically it's, it's not enough marketing or effort to get in front of people, right? Because if you're going to get in front of 10 sellers, then maybe you're, you know, five of them are going to sign up and you're going to sell two of them. So how do you get in front of more, you know, 10 more? Right. Um, and, 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 and it flows. Well, sp speaking of kind of hitting those marks, um, you, you were, you know, historically and back in the day, you know, you could expect maybe 40, 50% of your listings. So, but that has changed <laughs> dramatically over the years. And I think it's a, a function of a few things, but talk about what, you know, your goals have been say for the last few years. And then, uh, we could talk about, you know, what happened last year in 2021. Sure. Yeah. I, I would say that the closing percentage is higher now than it was in the past. Uh, there, it's more of a seller's market. And as a company, we do so much more in terms of marketing and we spend so much more money on, you know, the various platforms out there that we, you know, we're, we're better at, at selling our businesses than, than before. Some businesses are just really not sellable. They're, they're overpriced. The seller's expectation is not there. They don't have good books and records. So even if the price is right, you just can't get them through the diligence process. So, you know, there are some businesses that just aren't going to sell as even Transworld can't, can't right, sell. Right, right. But um, I, you know, I have, um, and of course the quality, this is another component. The, the, the higher the quality of the businesses and, and the, I've become more selective over the years, I'm in my 21st year. You know, the first five years, I just took everything I could, good, bad, and indifferent, you know, ugly and, and beautiful, you know, overpriced, underpriced, good books, bad books. I used, I took it all. And so you're obviously, your closing rate's gonna be lower when you have a lot of, you know, not really good inventory to sell. But um, I kept moving my goals up. And as I get into the sale of larger businesses, which I do in the M&A group, um, then obviously larger commissions uh, result in that. So I've had a, my budget, my goal has always been around a million dollars in fees. And, um, you know, over the years, I've circled around, you know, that number. Some years I've done better than that and some years I've done lower than that, but it's always a good target for me I can populate my fields. I can, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to do, you know, between 10 and 15 sales, you know, is, uh, closings is, is in the, in the target range. And obviously if I'm going to hit those bigger numbers, I have to sell more businesses, say you know, over a million than, you know, under a hundred thousand. Right? It's hard to hit a goal like that selling $50,000 businesses. Right. 
Um, so it allows me to lay the groundwork and and uh, know where I need to prospect, what types of businesses I need to prospect, what size businesses, in order for me to hit my target. So it keeps me keeps me focused. So t- let's talk about what happened last year. I mean, you had a million dollar goal. What happened? Well, um, I I you know I got within forty percent of that goal. Well, or, or let me just say that my actual production. A million dollars would have been 40% of what I actually did. Right. So for those of you that aren't quick on the percentages, it's about two and a half million right. in gross commissions. So And, uh, and so, yeah, I, I just didn't make that million that I wanted. <laughs> so you did two and a half times that. It was an incredible yeah. goal. It's, one of, it's the largest year that any single uh, broker that I know of has had in our organization. So it's an incredible goal. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank and, you. and, you know, it's kind of, you know, we certainly did. And we were looking at 2021, wondering what was going to happen. 2020 was good. It was a good year, but it was soft because, of course, COVID kind of gave us a good quarter of an interruption of deals. And then we were kind of struggling. So you lost a couple large deals because. Yeah, of that. I mean, part of part of that was that I did, you know, well in 2021 at the expense somewhat of 2020. And that I had a couple of big deals that, because of COVID, got pushed into 21. Um, but even accounting for that, it was still a, a, you know, a stellar year. Right. Things just came together. I think that um, people, you know, in the third and fourth quarter of 2020, their businesses came back. Um, and, and so going into 21, people had a good three, four quarters of numbers to, to, to post. As opposed to in 20, you had, you know, a good January, February started dropping off, March, April, and May, you know, you were completely dead. June, maybe you bottomed out and then you started coming back. So a lot of buyers were taking a wait and see approach. I don't want to give the seller the money that the business was worth in 2019, unless I can see that they can produce a 2019 kind of year. Right. And I think that 2021 was that year that this is the year that people did that. And so everything that was put on hold came back with pent up demand um, from buyers. Right. And so, you know, if you had a good, good company to sell, if you were a business owner with a good business, um, you had multiple bids on that at, at, at good prices. And 2020 was just not that environment. Right. So 2022, what do you, what are you looking at? So I think 2022, I think this year is going to be a good positive year. Um, you know, there's still a lot of activity. There's still a lot of money in private equity and family offices of what they refer to as dry powder, uh, looking to be invested. Um, I think that people put together a good tax return in 2021. They put together a profitable year. So you have the ability to get, we're seeing the ability to get businesses financed, uh, banked, SBA loans and, and, and other bank financing, because you did have a solid year to put together this year. So I think this is going to be a good year. And, uh, you know, I, I I didn't up my goal. You didn't put a two in front of it? I didn't put a two in front of it. Um, but I did up it from what I normally do. Um, you know, let's face it, when you're doing goals at the end of the year, you, you pretty much know what the first six months of the next year are going to be because it, if you yeah. don't have it in inventory and if it's maybe even not under contract, it's not going to close, you know, in the first three or four months of the year. So, you know, the things that you're closing the first quarter are things that you already have under contract in the fourth quarter. of, right. of And that's of, large of transactions. I want to qualify all that. You know, you could probably yeah. turn around some small transactions, but Peter's been again, working in our M&A division, closing larger transactions. So, Yeah, but even even smaller ones, I mean, if you listed something in January, um, you know, it, you, and you got it under, you know, contract in February, uh, you know, maybe you close it in March or April. So, I mean, it, right. it's still, you right. know, three months would be extremely fast and even for a small business. So right. you really have to, you know, when you're getting into the fourth quarter of the year, you need to 
really be focusing your marketing efforts on building a good book of inventory so that when you hit, when January rolls around, you've got a lot of good stuff. You're, you've got offers going out, you're packaging and marketing stuff. And, you know, you really need to build that first quarter up. So right. and that's going to dictate the rest of the year. If, if you don't have any inventory and you're sitting around in June or July, it's going to be hard for you to make, make your goal if you don't have anything to sell. Right. So if somebody's listening to this now and kind of as a wrap up, what, what would you say to them as far as making goals for the year? So, um, you know, I think it's never too late to start setting your goals. Um, and even, even, you know, in the middle of the year, it's not too late. The, the best time to, you know, I mean, I, I do goal setting at the end of the year for the following year, and then I have a blueprint to, to follow. Um, and, and my particular chart is out there and, and anybody can, can reach out to me uh, and I'm happy to forward that to you. And it's an Excel spreadsheet. You just need to fill in the blanks right. that are in yellow and everything else populates through. Um, but have a goal, write it down. It, the goal's no good if it's not written down and it has to have meat behind it where if you say you're going to sell 10 businesses then and you know that you're selling half of them, you got to have 20 listed. And if you right. know you need 20 listed, how many people do you need to talk to to get those 20 listings? And just do the math and then do the work that you need to do, the drop letters, the postcards, the, you know, the networking, um, the advertising, the things that you need to do to get your phone to ring in order to get appointments and get listings and then let the plan work. It really, it really works. And it's it really great does. advice. It's great advice no matter what business you're in. Write it down, get your goals, get the meat behind it, you know, understand what what activities you need to do to reach your goals and and uh yeah. and tell somebody about it too. So uh you know so, so they can hold you accountable. Peter, Absolutely. great great job. Congratulations on a huge year. Uh um, thank you, Andy. And um if somebody wanted to get in touch with you to talk more, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Yeah, just email me uh at pberg at transworldma.com. And I don't know if you can post that up. Yep, we and will. I'm, I'm happy. Notes. I'm happy to send you uh, my goal setting sheet and share any other words of wisdom that can help. All right, excellent. Thanks for coming on the show. All right, thanks, Andy. Hey, Andy, do you know what time it is? It's time for our deal of the week. Deal of the week. Sold. Hey, welcome back, everybody. And it is deal of the week, and I have Pam Vincent of Transworld Business Advisors of DFW, North DFW, and she just closed the deal yesterday. 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 So it's a great deal, and she's here to tell us about it. Hi, Andy. Thanks so much. It's in the oil and transportation, uh, oil and gas industry. It was a trucking company that hauls uh, sand and cement. And if everybody wants to look back at 2020, it was not only a terrible year uh, for a lot of industries, it was also terrible for oil and gas, the largest downturn in 40 years. So they uh, ended up strong at the end of the year with high uh, revenue matching even above the year before, but their net revenue was about the same. They wanted a pretty high dollar, and at the end, they accepted a lower asking price. SBA was very challenging, so we structured a very interesting deal, loan assumption for the balance due on the trucks, and uh, a pretty hefty seller note. But young sellers are going to end up with about a $10,000 check monthly for 10 years. Wow. A great deal for great people. And uh, so the business sold for how much? 1.5 million. And it was making about half a million, you think? About half a million, yeah. Yeah, so three-time multiple, but you know, you got the deal done through challenging times. That's what we do here at Transworld. Very much so. <laughs> Thanks for coming aboard. You're welcome, thank you. Welcome back everybody to the deal board and our uh, much loved beginning of the year, New Year's resolutions and goal setting episodes. And we're really excited to feature some people within our network who accomplished big goals in 2021. So first of all, I want to introduce Linda Broom from one of our offices in DFW, Dallas, Fort Worth Central in Texas. Linda, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much, Jessica. I appreciate you having me on today. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. So you had a fantastic 2021 and accomplished one of your BHAGs, which is what we call big, hairy, audacious goal. So why don't you tell us a little bit about 
what the goal was that you set for 2021 and and why was it so meaningful to you? Well, let's go back to 2020 because in 2020 I had goals and uh, I almost reached them, but I went ahead and set much larger goals for 2021. And um, I had set a goal of, um, you want numbers? Uh, $350,000 in commission is what I was shooting for. Um, I had hit uh, just on uh, just over a hundred thousand last year. And I really was thinking I'll just double it 200,000. And then I was challenged by uh, both my daughter and a good friend to say, you know what, why don't you shoot for more Linda? Because whenever you shoot for more, you hit it. Well, yes. that was what my daughter, it's a sweet daughter to think, think, think for a daughter to say. It's a great uh, thing for your daughter to say. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, just go for it. Um, you know, to go back in uh, three years ago, uh, I went through a divorce. And so I realized I have to make the money. Uh, there's a saying that says, you know, you, you eat what you kill. And so I knew that in order to survive, I was going to have to be successful on my own. And so 2021 was, you know, that was just a tough year with the pandemic, although business was were, businesses were still buying and selling. So that was great. But in 2021, I realized I really needed to step it up. And so I set that goal for $350,000 in gross commissions. And um, I am just shy, just, just, uh, uh, well, I don't know. I think it's really close. (laughs) You'll get there. You'll get there. So we're sitting recording this episode and we've got about 10 business days left in the, in the year. So you, you will get there and we'll all be sending you good vibes. But I mean, let's talk about, I mean, some guts and really going for it, not just doubling, but three and a half times what you did the previous year. You've, you've been in the business. You had a quick start, but you've been in the business now just a handful of years, correct? Yeah, yeah just yeah. four years. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So really, really going for it. And I love the why behind it, right? You're, you're going to be self-reliant. You're going to really go for those goals. You're going to prove your daughter. Correct. Right. right. <laughs> what is an abortive daughter? I love it. Yeah. So, it, you know, obviously let's just say well, you're going to hit it because, because even if you did it, it di- don't hit the exact number. You're, you're pretty damn close. And that's Very pretty close. impressive. Yes. <laughs> for a BHAG. So obviously going for a goal is not a straight line, right? There's ups and downs. And what were some of the things that you relied on this year to keep yourself focused and keep yourself on track when maybe it seemed like the goal wasn't going to happen? So mid-year, I wasn't sure if it was going to happen. Uh, So I had to step up my listings. I knew that if I had more listings, I would get more uh, closings. And so I stepped up um, my networking. Um, Most of my business in the last four years has been built on my networking. I started out doing drop letters and some cold calls. Not my favorite thing to do as many people. Some people love cold calls. That's not my favorite, but drop letters were good. And I got several leads from those. Um, but networking is really my bread and butter. I do four networking groups and I run and I lead one. And when you lead a group, you know, you're the expert at the front of the room. It lends a lot of credibility to you. So that was really one of the ways that I really built this. And I stepped up, uh, probably by June, I was, you know, thinking I got to get on it. So I got four or five more listings there at the middle of the year and really started marketing those direct mail. I also did direct mail. And that really helped. You know, I'm also a reader. You know, I was mm-hmm. listening to a, I was at a networking group Wednesday morning with a Bob Bodine and great guy, sports guy, motivating. And one of the things he said, and I've heard this before, and the statistic is staggering, is only 67% of people will read a book after they either graduate from high school or college. No. So sad because. Oh my God, no way. That's so terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's a terrible statistic, but unfortunately yeah. very true. And I read a lot. I'm a big, uh, you can see these, you know, the slight edge, probably the slight edge is one of the ones that really made me think about it. I actually had the book and then I won it at a networking group and I reread it. And I thought, you know, the little things that you do each day towards your business is what continues to build it. You always have to have that funnel. And that's why I needed more listings. I needed more listings in the funnel to be able to, um, you know, talk to more people, get more buyers. And um, so, you know, doing the little things each day really help you uh, grow in the long term. 
I, I love it. You focus on like the small steps ahead. Like what can you control today and not worry about tomorrow? I also love you touched on it, right? With your networking, but I know you, and that's, that's a huge strength of yours, right? So you really dove in and focused on improving your, one of your biggest strengths to make it even a bigger strength this year. So, <laughs> so you can't see this strength finders. I know it's hard to see in here. Um, strength finders are strengths based uh, strength. It's called Strengths Based Leadership. I'm a big Strength Finders fan because I was in corporate America for many years. And I always feel like in corporate America, they focus on all the things you do wrong when you get you get that yearly evaluation and they focus on all the things you don't do well. Okay, right. so you didn't do your expense reports quite right, or you yeah, you, you didn't do this detail over here. I'm a very big picture person and networking is in my in my top five strengths. And so I'm a communicator, I'm an activator, I'm a woo. <laughs> um, and a woo. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, I am a woo. And yes. so, um, and then I'm a, I'm a, I have belief in there and I do have a lot of faith and I believe I spend a lot of time in prayer also. And I also find for me that um, if I start my morning with my quiet time, then that gets my day going. I find at the end of the day, if I'm like, God, I didn't really get enough done. I look back and I'm like, you know what? I jumped out of bed without spending a little time with the, the good Lord. And uh, that's that's another thing that's really gotten me through the last four years, really. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's important, you know, what, no matter our listeners faith or not to, to set that intention first thing in the morning and, and spend some morning in uh, some type of routine that gets you going for the day. And it sounds like you've got a great routine and then right move right into focus into those small steps, the things you can control every single day. Right. And gratitude, you know, there's a book called yeah. The Gratitude Effect. Another one, another gentleman I had at my networking group that spoke, you know what, just being grateful for all you have. We are so blessed every day with the things that are surrounding us. And so just even taking that time to be grateful for that and then moving on with your day. I love it. I love it. So before we get into what you're going to be chasing for 2022, which I'm really excited um, to hear about, you know, you've given our, our listeners lots of good, good advice already, good resources, some books, any other like advice or direction you would give for someone who, who maybe has set a new year's intention, we won't call it a new year's resolution, a new year's intention or a goal before they haven't achieved it. Now they're frustrated and they're thinking, Hey, why even set goals? Like what would be your advice to that person? Um, read. And yeah. you know what? Um, sometimes our, per our perception uh, is not always right. There was a great story that I heard uh, about Arnold Palmer and Arnold Palmer um, built a golf course for a Saudi, the King of Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And when he got done, they played around and the King was so excited. He's like, I just love this. I just, I want to give you something else. What, what would you like? And Arnold Palmer was like, no, you know, I was just, I was just privileged to build this golf course for you. And uh, the King goes, no, 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 I really want to give you something. And so, you know, he was looking over at his golf clubs. He goes, you know, he goes, I collect golf clubs. And so you know, that would be great. And the king goes, ah, great, perfect. So he goes back to America two, three, four weeks later. He's like waiting for his golf club to come in the mail. He's waiting for his golf club to come in the mail and nor knock on the door of door and the FedEx guy's there and he hands him an envelope. And he looks at the envelope and he's like, and it says it's from the, from the, his friend, the king. And he opens it up and it's a deed to a golf club. <laughs> so he bought him a golf club. <laughs> so. <laughs> When I heard that story, being a golfer myself, I was like, yeah. the long, you know, the I thought he was gonna maybe send him like a wood putter from like a yeah. you know, something or classic or maybe a brand new driver that they came. Anyways, he gave him a golf club because <laughs> our perception is small. Right. So sometimes we have to think bigger. And so, you know, maybe the goal you have set isn't isn't enough to challenge you. And so you always need to put challenging goals out there because that'll push you harder to reach those. So um, you asked about next year. Yeah, yes. I, <laughs> I'm going to push myself to five hundred thousand dollars in commissions. And I know you'll, I know you'll hit it, Linda. You, you, you know, you've been on the right track. You're so positive. You got such a great routine ahead. I love that story too. I'm totally borrowing that story. Great. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. It. Yeah, and the whole time I'm sitting here thinking. Small, right? A single mm -hmm. golf club like Arnold yeah. Palmer. That's a great. driver, you know, yeah. a driver or a putter for sure is what was coming in the mail. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, Linda, congratulations on your success this year. We wish you so much luck in 2022. We're pulling for that 500 number, if not higher, for you. And you'll have to come back and let us know how it ends up. Absolutely. Thank you so much and happy new year to everybody. Have a prosperous year. 
Hi, welcome back to the deal board, everybody. And as part of our new year's um, episode that we do every year, our annual episode, we are interviewing some of our top performers across the trans world network who have achieved extraordinary goals they set for themselves in 2021. So I'd like to welcome Matt to the show. Matt, this is your first time to the deal board. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, you're very welcome. Thanks so much, Jessica. I've been listening to the deal board and it's a fantastic source of knowledge for everyone. Thank gain. you. Well, why don't you start, just Matt, tell the our, our audience a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, so I am a franchisee with Transworld Business Advisors. My office is Transworld Business Advisors of Orange. We are in Costa Mesa. Sorry, we are in um, Orange County. And uh, and it's been fantastic. So I come from 30 years of corporate world, right? This is the, my fifth year with Transworld. And obviously, my goal has been to not only have the freedom of time, but also be able to replace my salary that I used to get at corporate world. So is that how you set the goal for yourself in 2021? Yes, okay. Exactly. exactly. So, th so that's always been like, ever since I started, that number was there as my goal. This is the income I must achieve. Now, granted, from year one that I started in 2016, I've been selling businesses and putting back the money to the business to grow it. But this year in 2021, thankfully, it's been a fantastic year. Not only did I reach my goal, but I actually surpassed it by two and a half times. That's so, amazing. Uh, it's been fantastic. And uh, I'm hoping that next year and forward is going to be even more. Well, first of all, congratulations, Matt. That's that's amazing. Not only did you just achieve your goal, but hit two and a half times what you had originally set for the goal. What so what a great feeling. So our listeners listening to this episode are probably in the middle of setting their goals or had already set their goals for 2022. What what did you do throughout 2021 that kept you on track for your goal and helped you achieve it? Were there any like tactics that you can share with our listeners or even stuff, mindset stuff, right? Absolutely. You're absolutely correct. So if you're a business owner, you are an entrepreneur. As an entrepreneur, you are driven. Nobody has to drive you. Nobody has to tell you what to do. You're driven. You're committed to succeed. And that's really the number one factor. Get up every day in the morning, um, take care of the business. And as you know, our business is extremely challenging. It is not like selling a house or a commercial property. It's very complex. And we deal with a lot of obstacles on a daily basis. So the key is to enjoy what you do every day and look forward to that end result. But more importantly, you know, one of the ingredients for success, at least in my opinion, is to really care for the clients with whom we deal. With. Mm -hmm. It's really important because. We, we come across all kinds of characters, as, as you well know. And, uh, and it's very important to be able to be very compassionate, no matter what angle they come at you. And be understanding and come from a perspective of, I'm helping you, I'm educating you, so you make the right decision. That was, I think, a main ingredient. You know, if one were to look at my Google ratings, that's kind of the common message that I've received from my clients in terms of how I help them through education, handholding, walking the walk, and really working with them through the struggles of selling their business. Yeah. Well, I think it's two great points, Matt. And also it can apply, be applied really to any business or any goal, right? Universal right. messages of enjoy the ride, right? There's going to be a roller coaster up and down no matter what. And, and and treat the people you're working with with care and respect. It's actually fulfilling back to you, right? So whether you achieve the goal or not, you know, the ultimate one, you, you feel like you're making an impact or a difference, I'm, I'm assuming, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. When I uh, So going back to... Uh, another ingredient for success. And so when I started back in 2016, um, I'm a member of California Association of Business Brokers. And my instructor at the time, I think was in his seventh year or so. And I approached him and I said, look, what do I need to do? I'm starting. So what should I be doing to succeed? How do you market? 
And his message was that he was not spending any penny on marketing anymore. No, that's not what I'm suggesting for the for the audience to do. But that was his thing. And I said, huh? What do you mean? He said, I worked out my networking so hard that right now all of my clients come through networking. Mm -hmm. So I took that to heart and really worked through networking aspects of running our business. You got to know your influencers and more importantly, they got to know you. Right. Uh, Because then after a few years and doing some successful deals, then they not only like you, but learn to trust you. Hence, will continually uh, refer you to various opportunities. Yeah, it's all about building those relationships, right? And and in any business, that's very, very important for business success and goal achievement. Was there any time, Matt, throughout the year that you got frustrated or you felt like that goal was out of reach? <laughs> Multiple times. <laughs> that's like dumb question, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that, right? I mean, yeah. for us, uh, the, no deal is done until you get paid. Mm-hmm. And um, multiple times, um, as a matter of fact, one of the businesses that I sold in March of this year, I started back in uh, September of 2019. It was an engineering company in aerospace and defense and just general industry. And uh we had a buyer, we have multiple buyers, one buyer that was very serious, that were ready to make an offer. Then in February, the pandemic hit, everybody backed away. You know, fast forward to June, I called them and then things didn't work out. Then I brought another almost, you know, 12, 15, very capable buyers to the, to the client. Mm-hmm. And every time the client would say, I don't like this for pick a reason, open your, you know, black book of reasons and excuses and say, I don't like this client. So finally, um, I found one local company that seemed like a match made in heaven with them. (laughs) As soon as they meet each other, they said, oh, wow, this is such a perfect match. So persistence, You, you, you don't give up. Just continuously look for that right buyer. Now, I could have been a very, um, difficult person brought mm-hmm. to my client and tell them, look, I brought you 20 buyers, make a decision, pay my commission, but I possibly could get something from them. But that was it. That was the end of, you know, my career and recommendations. Whereas when we sold this business a month later, I got an email from someone else saying that, Hey, CEO of this company referred you to me. We're very close. I want to sell my business. Can you help me out? Mm-hmm. So this is the reward of persistence, being passionate, and working on the best interest of the clients. Yeah, and it's very true. You have to be persistent. I mean, nothing worth achieving in this world comes easily. There's going to be roadblocks, right? I kind of set you up with that question because we all know no goal comes easily, right? You have to work for it and have to be persistent. Well, you know, just so so there are easier ways of making money. And I mean, we have chosen a career that it's it's kind of challenging, uh, yet we have fun. You know, yeah. you, you got to have fun doing doing what you do. Otherwise, why do it? Yeah, you got to ride the roller coaster with a smile. I think Ray Titus, <laughs> one of our owners of a franchise, um, says that a lot. So, yeah. So, Matt, now you've achieved this big goal. You've replaced your salary. You know, your office is very profitable. You achieved your goal two and a half times over. So what are you going to set for 2022? Are you shooting higher? Shoot for the stars? Absolutely. Great question. So, um, you know, quite frankly, learning from your office and Houston office and quite a few very successful offices. Now, my goal is to build my office. So I will be adding other agents now that I have established processes, now that I have kind of learned how to get those leads, convert them to listings and sell them. um, Now I can train other agents to do the same thing and follow the same recipe and uh, make a lot of more people, you know, relatively rich (laughs) by selling business. Well, good. I look forward to seeing what you do over the next course of the year. You're going to have to check in with us at the end of the year, if not before. Um, But yeah, you've shared some great information with our our listeners. You know, I love to enjoy the ride, serve the clients, have some persistence mixed in there, and you'll achieve your goals. Before I let you go, 
if someone's looking to buy or sell a company in the Orange County, California area, how would they get in touch with you and reach out to you? So very simply, you can either email me at mmanavi at tworld.com or just look up my website and all the information is there. It is tworld.com slash orange for Orange County. Very simple. T-world. Very simple. Slash orange. Yes. Very simple, easy to remember, but we will drop that information in the show notes too for you, you listeners who can't drop that down right away. So you can just click those links in there. Matt, thank you so much. Congratulations on an amazing 2021. And we wish you all the best in 2022. Thank you so much. It was wonderful talking with you, Jessica. I look forward to a fantastic and a very prosperous year for everyone, not just me, but everyone. Um, there's a lot of wealth that can be shared. Hey, welcome back, everybody. And we are talking go- We're talking Dude. goals. And uh, we have Tom Milana of Transworld Business Advisors of South Florida. And uh, Tom has been with me for a long time. And uh, he reached a number of his goals this year. And I, I, I just want to go through it because I, I think, uh, number one, his personal goals are a really interesting story. But Tom, before we start talking about your personal goals, let's talk about your transport goals. You reach those and you like to set goals for yourself, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, every year, I, not only do I write it down in the book, but I also use the Sydney uh, uh, buttons, right? So uh, my goals for this year were a minimum of 20 new listings. As of last night, I've now got 23. Uh, Money-wise, my goal was 350000 in commission. As of tomorrow, it'll be about 450000 So it's been a hell of a year. Yeah, it's been a good year. Been, yeah. And, uh, you know, probably due to COVID, me not traveling as much has kept me here making more money, uh, which is going to allow for the next year's goal. Right. So you do like to travel. Uh, You are the international business broker. You do a good job of selling businesses all around the world. And so I uh, I think even 2020, you had a goal to sell a couple of businesses internationally. You did that. So, but let's talk about your personal goal because I I love your story. Uh, The personal goal is, uh, you know, back in February of 20, right before COVID hit. I was hanging out with a person that I met in Spain, and uh, that person had a very touching story about some type of a spiritual awakening. Uh, Not a religious thing, but a personal thing. And um, the story was that she, uh, a 60-year-old, recent divorcee, mother of four uh, with bad health, uh, ended up um, getting enough courage to walk the famous Camino de Santiago de Compostela, which is a 550 mile walk, a pilgrimage across the north of Spain. Uh, this is something that's been going on 1500 years. Wow. And, uh, so her story was so touching that she made me cry. And, um, by the end of that conversation, I said, that's, I know, I've always been a big walker. So I said, that's not, that's a goal of mine. Something I want to, I want to do. I want to do. And um, what was interesting was the, the day after that meeting, I was with a friend of mine in Barcelona. Uh, my friend is from Singapore and he works for the government back in Singapore. And uh, during dinner, he got a phone call and the phone call was, uh, you need to come back to Singapore. There's an emergency. And uh, when he hung up the phone, he wouldn't tell me what it was, but he said, Tom, you and your family, you, you need to go back to the United States now. And again, this was, this was uh, Valentine's Day uh, of 2020. And what had happened was uh, obviously COVID and he got pulled back to the country. And, uh, and when we got back to Florida, you know, a month later, they had closed things down. And that, uh, that gave me the timing needed to start training for my Camino walk. And so in 2020, I walked about 1,800 miles here in Florida with the idea that, okay, COVID will be over, right? And then I'll be able to go to Spain and do my walk. And that obviously didn't happen. And so uh, my goal was, okay, let's walk 2,500 miles in 2021. 
And so um, I've been going out there almost each and every day, walking 10 to 15 miles a day. And uh, I, as of yesterday, I'm at 3,100 miles for the year. That's which incredible. Is, which is a bit more than the pilgrimage, which is now scheduled for May 1st. So, so how long does the pilgrimage take? I mean, 500 miles is not something you do in a day. No, uh, the average person takes about 35 days. They walk anywhere from 12 to 20 miles a day for 35 days, maybe stopping one or two days along the way. It's a, uh, it's a very interesting, uh, there's a great movie about it. It's called The Way with Martin Sheen. Uh, great movie. And it gives you, uh, and some people will go by bike. Uh, some people will ride a horse. Uh, most people walk. Um, back in 2018, they had approximately 80,000 people walk it. Uh, so it's it's one of the it's one of the most well known pilgrimages in, in the world. And in Europe, a lot of people just open their front door and start walking. Right. So um, the the there, there's numerous trails, but the the famous trail that I'll be taking is it's called the French Way, and that starts at the uh, a town called Saint Jean de Paul in the south of France, in which you walk over the Pyrenees Mountains and uh, enter into Spain, and then walk all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. So it's about five hundred and sixty miles. That's incredible. So let's talk about your training a little bit because I know it's had some effect on you. So what's <laughs> been the beneficial effects of walking 3,100 miles? Yeah, yeah. Since February of 20, I have lost about 65 pounds, 65 to 70 pounds. I've literally given out, given away all my clothes to charity and, have, and buy everything brand new from, from, from boxers to, uh, to suits. Uh, in fact, you might even see some some well uh, well needed people out there, people that deserve clothes with a, a Trans World T-shirt standing standing there. You know, uh, if you see somebody on a sidewalk with a Trans World T-shirt, that's extra extra large. It came from me. So um, health wise, it's just been amazing because I was borderline diabetes. I had liver and kidney issues for a long time. Um, you know, my numbers were all, all borderline where the doctor had said, you know, go out and uh, you're going to go out either in really bad health, you know, um, but you have a decision to make. And, and so uh, my last physical, they couldn't believe how perfect everything was, you know, blood work and stuff. So uh, that and it's been good for the mind. Yeah. I mean, uh, 10 to 15 miles a day in the South Florida heat must be something, but you know, you get, I guess you get used to it. Yeah. It takes you about a year to get used to it. <laughs> so, so 2022 is coming up and, uh, we're here actually in 2022. Yep. Uh, and so what's your goals for 2022? Are you, are you going to write them down again? Obviously that works pretty well for well, you. I've, I've already started writing them down. Right. Uh, the big goal is to actually walk the Camino. That's a great. So the big great goal, goal will be I will be taking a bit of a sabbatical uh, as of, uh, of a, uh, April 30th, probably for two months, uh, possibly three. Um, now, granted, a lot of the work I've been doing is is also international, as you mentioned in the beginning. So right. I actually have a few customers that I need to start visiting and. I still feel that I'll be able to do some selling while I'm gone uh, as if I had some internet access, right? Maybe not the first 30 days, but beyond right. that. The goal is really to walk across Spain and possibly walk down the coast of Portugal as well. So that's the goal. Uh, Business-wise, uh, I think uh, that I'm still able to uh, gross a minimum of 400,000 commission uh, at a minimum. Um, I got a couple of big deals I'm working on that I might hit that goal in the first quarter before I leave. And that that's really the goal uh, between the quick service restaurant listing that I have and, uh, and this uh, Miami deal that is now being pushed from December 30th to January 15th. It kind of puts the goal right there and then we'll have to rethink the numbers. There you go. Uh, but uh, 2022 is going to be all about me. And, uh, and that, that's really, that's the goal. It's all going to be about health and, uh, 
know, start start putting that legacy together financially. Excellent. Well, that is an amazing story. We are behind you in your goals. We support those and uh, look forward to you being able to take that time for yourself and reach those goals and go do something that is uh, personally meet, you know, meaningful to you and your family. And of course, um, get you back here and uh, continue your financial goals as well. So Tom, amazing story. Thanks for coming in and telling us about it. Thank you, Andy. Uh, you know, I wouldn't, without trans world, I don't think I'd ever be there. So it's really, uh, uh, it, it'll be January 7th. will be 15 years here. Wow. That's you know, and, and as you know, I had a, a, options to leave years ago and, um, you know, I stay because it is a family and, um, I, I think there's, uh, there's no, there's no ceiling. You know, we can, we can make as much as we want to make, you know, it's, it's, it's not that there's a glass ceiling. It literally is no ceiling. It's been so. a, it's 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 been a great run with everybody is and you've done more than your part of giving back and uh teaching others and mentoring others and uh i really appreciate it tom uh amazing story thanks again brother thank appreciate you it. hey jessica you know what time it is money time almost it's time for listing of the week Hey, welcome back, everybody. And it is Listing of the Week, and we have a special first-time appearance of Lauren Olshuler from Transworld Business Advisors of Minnesota. And she has a very nice, solid M&A type uh, opportunity to talk to you about today. Actually, very nice listing, uh, Lauren, so welcome. Thanks, Andy, nice to be here. So um, I've got a paper distribution business. It's nationwide, located here in Minnesota. It does about 10 million in revenue. They've been consistent and steady. This business has actually been growing. And um, the types of um, industries that they work in are retail, hospitality, financial, manufacturing, packaging, and even municipalities. So they'll distribute paper for parking tickets, et cetera. Hmm. So they're very diverse. Um, business. They have a few national salespeople and about 20 employees locally. Wow. Sounds like a really good business. So why don't you give us a little bit of the financial picture? Uh, what are they? Sure. sure. So the seller's discretionary earnings or cash flow is about one and a half million. And we have about 10% seller financing that are willing to finance. And in order to um, get financing for this business, a buyer would need about 573000 to put down. Right. Nice. And the bank financing, obviously. Right. We, we have it pre-qualified for an SBA loan. Wow. Then it sounds like a really good deal. And I'm sure you're getting a lot of a lot of action on that one. So somebody's going to have to move fast. So what's the best way to get in touch with you if somebody wants right. to? So they can call me at 612-719-4458. Um, they can email me. My last name is a little bit tricky, L. Altshuler at tworld.com. Or they can go to tworldmn.com and click on listings, and then they'll find it there, paper distribution business. Yeah, we'll drop your name and number into the show notes, and it'll be all over. So people will be able to get in touch with you. So good job, Lauren. Very nice. So thank you very much for coming on today. Thank you. Thanks for tuning into the show today. If you like the podcast, share it with your friends on social media. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on your favorite podcasting app. If you have questions, would like to appear, or have suggestions for topics for the show, get in contact with us through our website, thedealboardpodcast.com. Thanks for listening.